Hi guys, I sure wish I was there with you, um, but I can't be, so we're going to do a, a screencast lesson instead of a regular lesson, and that's going to be alright. So it says, uh, Unit 6, Lesson 14, Finding Solutions to Inequalities in Context. So our goal today is in context, so it's almost like a yucky ELA lesson um, and trying to find out the meaning of what they're asking for. So I can write an inequality to represent a situation. We did that last year. We're going to keep doing it this year. And I can describe the solution to an inequality by solving a related equation and then reasoning about the, um, the values that make that inequality true. And that's the part I think a lot of you had trouble with on Friday's cool down. So we're going to kind of walk through kind of what that looks like. So the first one says solutions to equations and inequalities. Negative x equals 10. So it's an equation, so I've got to figure out, okay, what do I have to plug in for x or replace x with to get me um, a positive 10? Well, if I just plug in a regular 10, negative 10 does not equal positive 10. So I have to use my integer rules or my <clears throat> my rules for rational numbers. So a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. So a negative times a negative 10 is going to give me a positive 10. So my answer to this one would be negative 10. All right, find two solutions to negative x is greater than 10. All right, so let's go ahead and draw ourselves a number line. All right, um, we want negative x to be greater than 10. So when we plugged in negative 10 here, we figured out that it actually was indeed 10, but 10 is not greater than 10. So we have to think, okay, well, what could I plug in there? Well, I'm going to need to try 9. So let's try putting in a negative 9. Well, negative times a negative 9 is 9. 9 is not greater than 10. So we're going to have to have negative 11, negative 12, negative 13. Those are all values that when I substitute in, it's going to work. So my answer should be, it could be negative 11 and a half. It could be negative 11.5, something like that. All right, 2x equals negative 20. I'm going to solve this like we would any other equation. I'm going to divide negative 20 into two equal groups. x equals negative 10. So now they want to find two solutions to the inequality. So I know that it would be equal to 2 times negative 10 is greater than negative 20. But that's not going to work because that would be equal to. So let's try 2 times negative 9 and see if that's greater than negative 20. That would be negative 18. Negative 18 is greater than negative 20 because remember the further to the right the larger the number. So negative 9 would work, negative 8, negative 7. You could do negative 3.5. Anything like that will work. All right, so here's where they're going to have us working on what does the value mean. So we're earning money for soccer stuff. So it says Andre has a summer job selling magazine subscriptions. He earns $25 an hour plus $3 for every subscription he sells. Andre hopes to make at least enough money to buy a new pair of soccer cleats. Let N represent the number of magazine subscriptions Andre sells this week. Write an expression. So an expression doesn't have an equal sign and it doesn't have an inequality. So for the amount of money he makes. So I know it's $25 a week plus $3 for every subscription. So N represents the number of subscriptions. That's my expression. And I'm going to use this as I go down through the problems. The least expensive pair of soccer cleats Andre wants is $68. Write and solve an equation to find out how many magazine subscriptions Andre needs to sell to buy the soccer cleats. 
All right, well, I know I'm gonna start with my expression, 25 plus 3n, and I'm gonna set that equal to $68 because that's what the cost is of the least expensive pair of soccer cleats. So I'm gonna subtract 25 on each side of my equal sign, and I'm gonna be left with 3n equals $43. Now I'm gonna split this into three equal groups. So I have N equals 14, that's a bad color for this background. N equals 14 and one third subscriptions. So we're not gonna talk about the validity of our answer right now, we're just gonna stop there because that's what our equation tells us it's equal to. If Andre sold 16 magazine subscriptions this week, would he reach his goal? Explain your reasoning. Well, he needs at least 14 and one third subscriptions, right? So would 16 work? Yes. 16 would be, um, I should probably clear that up, 16 subscriptions would be more than enough. So for the next one, for the next one, it says, um, what are some other numbers of subscri subscriptions? Get the cat. Get the cat. What are some other numbers of subscriptions Andre could have sold and still reached his goal? Well, I know I have to be 14 and one-third subscriptions, right? That's what it's equal to. So what are some other numbers of subscriptions that would work? Well, 14 would not be enough. I know that would be too small. So I have to think, okay, what's going to be enough? So 15 subscriptions would have worked. 16, 830, all of these numbers would have worked as a possible number of subscriptions. Notice, I don't have any decimal or fraction answers here because they're talking about magazine subscriptions. Write an inequality expressing that Andre wants to make at least $68. So Andre wants to make at least $68. So he wants to make more than or equal to $68. Remember, at least tells me it could be equal to, but it tells me he wants to make, that's the lowest he wants to make. So he could make more than that. Write an inequality expressing the number of subscriptions Andre must sell to reach his goal. All right, so we're gonna start with our expression. So 25 plus 3n is greater than or equal to 68. From here, we're gonna subtract, we're gonna sub, ooh, 25. And we're going to be left with 3n is greater than or equal to 43. Then we're going to divide by 3 on each side. n is greater than or equal to 14. I did it again. n is greater than or equal to 14 and 1 third. All right. <clears throat> so could Andre sell exactly 14 and one-third magazine subscriptions? Well, I want you to think about this in context of could you buy 14 and one-third pair of shoes? No, they're not going to sell you one-third of a pair of shoes. So are, they, are you able to sell one-third of a magazine subscription? No, you can't sell... Uh, 
part of a magazine subscription. So now we're going to switch gears and we're going to talk about Diego. So remember, the context of the problem matters. So if it had been 14 and one third dollars, sure, but that's not what N represented in the previous problem. It represented the number of subscriptions. Diego budgeted $35 from his summer job earnings to buy shorts and socks for soccer. He needs five pairs of socks and a pair of shorts. The socks cost different amounts in different stores. The shorts he wants cost $19.95. Let X represent the price of one pair of socks. Write an expression for the total cost of the socks and shorts. All right, so I'm going to start with an expression. So that means there's no equal sign, no inequality. Oh, wait, I don't want to include the 35. I want to include the five pairs of socks plus $19.95 for the shorts. Write and solve an equation that shows that he spent exactly $35 on the socks and shorts. This is where I'm going to use the 35. So five times the number of pairs of socks plus $19.95. And that's going to equal $35. <clears throat> so they want us to solve it. So I'm going to subtract $19.95 from each side. And I'm left with five pairs of socks could be equal to... $15.05. From here, I'm going to split this into five equal groups. So I end up with the cost per pair of socks could be $3.01. Each, so each pair of socks. So then it says, list some other possible prices for socks that would still allow Diego to stay within budget. Well, if $3.01 is the most he can spend, then he could spend $3. He could spend $1.99. He could spend $2.50. Any of these would work. Anything less than $3.01. Write an inequality to represent the amount um, that Diego can pay, spend on a single pair of socks. So X has to be less than or equal to $3.01. Okay, that's the way it has to be. X has to be less than or equal to. Remember, the alligator eats the bigger number. So $3.00 uh, $3 and a penny is the most he can spend. So that means that that's got to be the largest. X can be anything less than. Can Diego spend exactly $3.01 for each pair of socks? Yes, he can. Clothing. Costs. Partial. Well, let's fix that. Clothing costs less than whole dollars. Then whole dollar amounts. How can we tell if there are restrictions on the solutions of an inequality, such as only positive numbers or only negative numbers? So how can you tell? It's all about the context. What is the problem? T 
talking about. That's the question you need to ask yourself every single time. Can you tell if there are restrictions? Yes or no. So if it's just a regular inequality with no word problem or any kind of um, other situation with it, you can automatically tell that it could be a decimal or a fraction. But if there's a word problem context, for example, the magazine subscriptions or the cost of the pair of socks, you have to think, okay, is that possible in the real world? Use your your understanding of the real world and what happens as your springboard to decide whether you need to round or not. So this slide in here is just kind of a reminder of of um, inequalities and what we talked about last school year. So I got to pick a color that's not blue. All right. So an open circle means that the value is not included. So there's no line underneath the inequality, so it's going to be an open circle. X is greater than, so remember the mouth eats the bigger number, so X is greater than. And then if you remember the trick I showed you last year that my student teacher showed me many years ago, if you look at it, the inequality tells you which direction to draw your arrow. If the circle is filled in, that means that it could include it. That's where you get that equal to. So you get that line underneath it. And if you look, you'll see the arrow and it's pointing in the direction. Now X has to be on the left for this to work. Then it says if it's between two values, so if the X is in the middle, you're going to have two circles. And it's going to depend on um, what the situation is telling you. So X is greater than 1, but it's less than 6, less than or equal to 6. So we're going to look at ones like this, this school year. Last school year, we didn't do what are called compound inequalities. This year, it's game on. So name some values that satisfy this inequality. So I can't choose 1, but I could choose 1 and a half. I could choose two and three quarters. I could choose four and uh, four tenths. Any of those would work. And remember the arrow represents that it's not just whole numbers. What is the inequality shown in, um, what is the inequality shown on this graph? Okay, well it's an open dot and I know that it's less than Okay, so I know that x is less than negative 1. So when I'm trying to figure out my inequalities, I know that I need to look at um, whether the circle is open or closed. And that's how I decide my inequality symbol. And then if I look at the direction it's going, that part right here shows me what my inequality is going to look like. It's kind of cool. All right, so your cool down today, I want to switch over to actual Canvas and take a look at it there. So I'm going to open up like Ian's fake account. Remember, Ian's my, my kid, so I use his stuff all the time. So let's see here. So I'm going to open up my cool down for him. And let's talk about it. So there are three questions today. So it says, it is currently zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, and the temperature is dropping four degrees per hour. The temperature after H hours is negative four. If the equation is negative four H equals negative 14, what is the value of H? So you need to solve this equation right here. So you're solving this equation. So you're thinking negative 4h equals negative 14. So you need to think, how do I get that h all by itself? Is negative 56 going to do the job? 56, 3.5, negative 3.5. Use your calculator here. Don't make this harder than it has to be. All right, the next one. It is currently negative 0 degrees outside, and the temperature is still dropping 4 degrees per hour. The temperature after H, H hours is negative 4H. What is the value of negative 4H is, great, is less than negative 14? 
All right, so let's look at this. We have negative 4h is less than or equal to negative 14. So you need to split this up in the same way you would solve an equation. And you're going to notice that these inequalities are backwards, and that's going to be okay. I have to obviously edit this cooldown because I don't know why it's showing up like this. It's probably something in my formatting. But you need to solve the inequality. So what has to be on this side of my inequality? Think about that. All right. So the last part is the most important part, and this is where we're selecting all the values that make it true. So you have to decide if I put negative four times one, is that gonna be less than or equal to negative 14? Negative four times two, is that gonna be less than or equal to negative 14? Negative four times three, is that going to be less than or equal to negative 14? I'm going to switch colors. So I've done this one, this one, this one. Negative 4 times 4. Is that going to be less than or equal to negative 14? Negative 4 times 5. Is that going to be less than or equal to negative 14? Now remember, the further um, you're, with your number line, You've got um, the further you go in that direction, the bigger the number. The warmer it is, the less you owe. Think about it that way. Okay, so you want to you wanna consider that on a number line. Take a look at my classroom. And if you're not in my classroom, take a look at the number line you brought home. Or Google a number line and look at it that way. If you've got questions or you need help, send me an email. I won't be able to answer them as quickly as I normally do because I'm going to be in appointments all day. But I will try my best and I will definitely answer them on Wednesday. Remember, you have two chances at this cooldown, so do your best. Bye. I hope you have a great rest of your day.